I turned to see the voice that was speaking with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the middle of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed in a robe, reaching to the feet and girded across his breast with a golden girdle. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as a dead man. Is that what it says? Do you know who's saying that? That's the same man, that's the same John, who used to lay his head on his bosom. He was a beloved. When he saw him in his humanity, he had that closeness. He could lay his head, his head right on his breast. He could speak and commune with him in this way. And this is the same Christ. But John doesn't recognize him in his holiness. What is there that Jesus sees in the church? What is there that makes his eyes flame as fire? What is it that is, makes him come in this appearance? He's standing now in the middle of the house of God with this fire in his feet like burnished bronze. And John, who knew him well, John who laid his head on his bosom, now falls on his face. You know, it's one thing to know Jesus is his humanity. It's another thing to know him in his holiness. Even Daniel says, I was left alone and I see this vision and no strength was left in me. All my natural color turned to a deathly pallor. Isaiah 6, dear King Uzziah died. Then I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, loft and exalted with the train of his robe filling the temple. These uh, seraphim can't even look at the holiness. They've got to cover their eyes. It's so bright. It's so awesome. They cover it. They cover their feet as if they cover their shame. They're just trying to shield themselves from this awesome holiness. And one called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. God's been impressing about this, that he's trying to get his glory into us. And that glory is a vision of his holiness. His awesome holiness in a day of declension, in a day of backsliding, a day of hypocrisy, a day of soft preaching. God says, I'll have a holy people. I'm going to reveal my holiness. You read the fifth chapter, that great prophecy of Isaiah. Nobody could prophesy like he does in the fifth chapter of Isaiah if he wasn't a man of God. He had a heart that was after God. He was crying out against the darkness. You look at it, you read verse 21 of those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. He knew sin. He marked sin in the nation. He saw the sin in the land. But now he sees the vision of the holiness of Jesus. And listen to what he says. Woe is me. For I'm ruined. You just heard it. I'm devastated. Because I'm a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal. A burning coal in his hand. Now that word in Hebrew is a hot stone, a burning arrow in his hand. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is forgiven. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me, Isaiah. When he had this cleansing, God knew who he wanted to send, but he had to hear from this man. I believe that Isaiah became the burning coal from the fire on the altar of God. He became the flaming arrow in the hand of God. He said, go and tell this people, keep on listening, but do not perceive. He didn't promise him any fruit. He didn't promise him a revival. He said, I want you to go out. You're going to be a hot arrow. You're going to be a hot coal and you're going to burn their lips. You're going to burn their ears. You're going to burn everything around you. You are going to be a hot coal from the fire on the altar of God. And God's trying to get some coals. He's trying to ignite a flame in hearts here tonight. He wants to take a hold of this backslidden boy, put him on the altar of holiness, burn out everything unclean in him that he becomes a fiery arrow in the hand of God who can go forth proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ I hear this preaching unity, unity, unity you can't come forth from the holy altar of God 
You can't come forth as a hot stone. You can't come forth as a flaming arrow and hug apostate. I will not hug apostates. That is not love. That is not love. Love is that which weeps. Love is that is so devastated by the sin and corruption around. It goes to the altar of God, becomes a fiery flame, it becomes a burning arrow. Listen, you cannot have a hot stone touch you without being burned. You can't have the holy hot arrow of God pierce your soul without being wounded. God says, if you're going to walk with me in holiness, if you go to my altar, and what's at the altar, that's where the fire is. That fire never went out to the altar, and that's where the fire is. And that's the secret closet. That's the secret closet. You're not going to get it here. We don't have a praying people in the land, and that's what's frightening. You're not going to be able to make it unless you go out of this place and I'm going to be a man of prayer. I'm going to be a man in the secret closet. I'm going to seek the face of God. I'm going to leave this place not just listening to the tapes. Go into the secret closet. God said, I'll make you a sword. You'll be a sword in my hand. God's looking for hot coals, burning coal in his hand which he took from the altar with tongs. And everything that that coal touches is cleansed. That's Christ in us. Lord Jesus, we bow humbly before you. We want to see more and more of your majesty and holiness. We want to bow our knees before you and say, Lord Jesus, heal us of our backslidings. Heal us, O oh Lord, of our lethargy. You've been calling us, Lord, to lament. You've been calling us to wake up. You've been calling us to take the burden of the Lord. But none of that can happen till we see your holiness. Till we see you, Jesus, with that girdle of righteousness on you.